Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss the biggest entertainment news, entertainment buzz, just celebrity gossip, and anywhere and anything happening in the entertainment industry. If it's not on Tea Time, then it's not big enough. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Oluwa Shonkaye and Nimi Dekombe. What's hey good, guys? man? Hey, guys. How are you doing? Elsie, you look amazing. Thank you, John. African Giving us the Mama Africa, Africa vibes. <laughs> what inspired this look? My mood. Yeah? What's Friday. your mood? What yes, is this Friday. To Friday. Traditional. Just that. I don't know. Tell me. I'm excited. I'm calm and African. Sunshine. Mm -hmm. Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're starting with the first friend. He says, never underestimate your powers and don't wonder who he is. It's Whiskey. Um, he also said he took some time off social media and I think that part is really good because it's, it's beginning to be very important for people to yeah. take mm. time off social media and I'm glad that he's doing this and also hope that his fans would learn from him as well. Yeah. Okay. No, so, he's your, <laughs> he's my he's your, he's your so, G. Basically, I think this is good, especially coming from someone of this um, status. Like, when you take time, you, you expect them to be on their phones all the time mm -hmm. or be on social media trying to see what people are saying about this, saying about that. But when you take that time off, you realize that there's actually a peace, there's actually bliss that comes with it. So mm -hmm. I think um, I can resonate with what he's saying. And, um, yeah. Like it detoxes. Yeah, like yeah, it's, exactly. yeah, I think um, social media is too toxic these days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, like, need, you know, there have been so many, detox. there have been so many people who have been saying social media is toxic. We've seen so many celebrities talk about how people should focus more on the things that happen Even offline. Even the people that are toxic say social media is toxic. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that what he has said is actually very good advice and people should take it seriously because mm -hmm. Sometimes, although I know that people secure their bag from social media and they mm. need to be plugged all the time, but then it's also good to take a step back and unplug mm -hmm. from all of the distractions because social please. media is very, very distracting. Just mm -hmm. unplug and meditate and hear your own voice because when you're on social media, you're seeing so many people's comments, mm -hmm. you're seeing so many people's opinions. Garbage in, garbage You know? Out. So just take out that time and just mm, listen to your own voice. Who are you? That kind of stuff. So, yeah, this kid made sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, moving on to the next story, actress Jamila Jamil says she identifies as queer. In a statement she released via Twitter, she said, I kept it low because I was scared of the pain of being accused of performative bandwagon jumping over something that cost me a lot of confusion, fear, and turmoil when I was a kid. End of quote. She went on to say she would be jumping off Twitter for a while because she does not want to read mean comments dismissing her coming out. This is coming after backlash on her been casted for an upcoming HBO Max ballroom competition. Um, the ballroom culture came out of New York City as black and Latino gay men and trans women created support system for another called Houses. Responding to critics in her statement, um, she said, I know that my being queer does not qualify me as ballroom, but I have privilege and power and a large following to, bridge, um, to bring to the show, as does the absolutely iconic iconic Megan Thee Stallion and its beautiful contestant and ballroom host. Okay, yeah, end of quote. Personally, for me, I think um, Jamila Jamil did not really understand where the backlash was coming from. Was coming from because she went out to say, okay, she's queer and um, she's a South Asian um, actress. That's not really the point. That's not really the bone of contention. What the bone of contention the is that in Hollywood, there has been underrepresentation under of these um, um, LGBTQ um, characters. And when you look at the voguing culture, when you look at the ballroom culture, it just started gaining prominence. For them then, when it started, it was a safe space for them. When you look at RuPaul's Drag Race, that is an instance where you can say that, okay, they were beginning to gain acceptance a little bit. So you see that there's still kind of like discrimination against them. You see, okay, for, for example, there was an outrage when um, Scarlett Johansson was cast to play a transgender woman. They are like, why don't you just cast a transgender actress? So you see that even within the Hollywood space, as much as it seems like as you know, these people are well represented, there's still a form of discrimination. So Jamila Jamil being casted as 
a host or a judge. The outla the outrage is not because oh she you are not part of the LGBTQ community mm. because she's coming out to say she's queer too. It's form it's like a form of identity politics. Oh, I identify with you, so I should be a part of this show. But it's not really about being queer. It's about the fact that there are some people who have been there. There are some people who have been in this game for a very long time. Because there was a lady that um, a transgender woman that came out to say she also you know was interviewed to be a host for this, and she's surprised that it went to somebody yeah, who knows absolutely nothing about the culture. Yeah, but she was saying almost exactly why she's coming out now. She was saying that she has been part of the house culture for a long time, mm -hmm. so that gives her the more understanding of what the LGBTQ society goes through. So I think that's why she felt it was now time for her to come out, which is why I feel like her coming out is a bit selfish. I mean, it's not like you really wanted to come out. You just feel like, because you're queer also, you, you, you actually fit the role. And mm -hmm. then I saw something else from some of the um, people in the community they were saying that um, the LGBTQ community needs to be more open and accepting so what stops a straight person from being part of your show I mean you people also are part of shows that are for straight people if you can put it that way so why can't you accommodate straight people so that she didn't really need to come out um, to explain herself to be part of it because if you're saying that you want to be accepted then why can't you accept other people as well so the conversation is quite broad and I get where she's coming from but I think this coming out and trying to tie it to being from mm -hmm. South Asia and that is not really accepted that, that you're the only one in your family that's just mm -hmm. so much actually when you're coming out just to respond to this to backlash. this kind of backlash I feel like that is not the right way to you know that's why I said it feels like identity politics like oh because of I'm a queer person yeah. there should not be backlash and I'm saying that the backlash is say, not even yeah. necessarily because she's straight or because I've seen so many comments I saw people so many people commenting about this and the fact that it was started by black and Latino people. They said that the whole culture started because of they wanted to create a safe space where culture could intersect, where different races, different people of different races, sexuality could intersect and, you know, just put on a show because it's a competition of men and women dressing flamboyantly and, you know, putting, if you watch RuPaul's Drag Race, you understand what this show is going to be mm -hmm. about. So people felt like, okay, who is Jamila Jamil? She doesn't really know much about this culture. When you She's call them not, men and women, they might find it offensive because some of them don't uh, uh, um, I identify, identify as, as But let's say what the has to say, though. Yeah. Well, I think she doesn't owe anybody any explanation because um, she didn't appoint herself to start with. And secondly, like you rightly said, um, I didn't even know there was a conversation around that already, that if this um, LGBT community people, sorry, that might sound derogatory, but... Uh, people. Hmm? I said they're people, so it's not derogatory. Oh, don't worry, I know they mean me. They're sensitive. <laughs> yeah, they're very sensitive. This, this LGBTQ members right really want to be accepted in the society why are you not going to be inclusive why won't you let other people be included into your community so that we can all live as one because if you're saying um they have been um what, what, what did you use that for a while they've been, they have been underrepresented, they've been underrepresented. Mm -hmm. but we've seen a lot of movies that you see a straight person whose best friend is gay. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And we don't have a problem with and it. And we see them create a character you, of a couple that is so unnecessary to the movie, but because, but because they have And to be we dead. don't complain. Straight people don't come out to say, why put uh, this movie is all about love, it's all about um, two be, um, a guy and a girl in love, opposite sex. Why did you have to put a gay person? We don't come out to say stuff like that. So um, Jamila coming out now, I don't think it's selfish. I just think it is the world we live in where you really have to let people know exactly what's because she might lose a lot of gigs just from this so she came out to explain this so but left to me i don't think she should have even said anything because i think she kind of made it worse That's by saying. saying by saying all of these things by saying oh she can identify with it and and queer is not peculiar to what the ballroom yeah, whatever no, 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 is it's about not, it's yeah, not yeah. peculiar to that they're talking about transgender women gay men and all, all of, of that them are together true accept it yeah. lgbtq but, yeah, yeah, but she now doesn't have a peculiar 
what do I put it? Yeah, because mm, to it. she has even said it herself that she's queer, but she is more attracted to straight men. So it's more or less like she dates more of men. So the queerness is probably sometimes maybe she likes women or that kind of stuff. So it's not really that's why I said that her coming out is not really important to the topic. Yeah. The topic is not are yeah. you queer or but I think not? I think it's the LGBTQ community needs to be less sensitive because if you're talking about you being accepted in the community then you also need to accept I don't think you people. can say that they should be less sensitive because for some of them it's their lives that are involved. There are still transgender know, people that are being murdered. There are still gay people that we are imprisoned in this but, country. But you know so you what? cannot just say that they're But you know what? At every opportunity, maybe life. it would reduce if at every opportunity you, you're welcoming. But when they see you like, okay, we're set. No. Do you understand? We push is people it, is away. Is it the gay people that should be welcoming or the other people that should be more welcoming? I think in the because world... there are more people who are more antagonistic towards them. Yeah, of course. But I think presently, I think a lot where she's of people. Coming from is when, um, um, let's say, black people come out to say Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and they can be very sensitive, sensitive about it. Sensitive about like, race okay, can issues. you come down? Same way when women come out to talk about gender equality. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes like, oh, when a white person says know, Black Lives Matter, they tell you, shut up, you, know, you don't know so anything do about yeah, Black Lives. So I get it, but I think I think the world just needs to reduce the sensitivity. It's not just gay people, it's not just black people. It's not just, I think everybody. Everybody needs sensitive. to be, yeah, this we're all sensitive. Too. All right, stay tuned. That's tea time. We'll be right back, right back after this very short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, yeah. and plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. Sleeping early, sleeping early. Welcome back. This is Steve T. Time on Plus TV Africa. Snoop Dogg calls out Oprah Winfrey and Gil King, accuses them of trying to tarnish Kobe Bryant's legacy with a um, rape interview question. The outrage emanated from Gil's interview with Lisa Leslie, during which the reporter probed the former WNBA star about Bryant's 2003 rape case. Um, Snoop Dogg maintained that um, Gil and... Um, he maintained that Gail and Oprah have not been going after Harvey Weinstein and have stood on the fence when it comes up. And King herself responded to the criticism regarding her mentioning of Brand rape case, claiming that she was mortified and embarrassed by the network's decision to choose um, that particular clip to promote her interview with Leslie. This is just... So I wish I could use Snoop Dogg's words. Like no, I you can't. really wish. And I said I wish I you could can't. use them. Like because Snoop Dogg is currently. I think that's. Of that. I'm actually happy. No, nobody that see. Do you know what? A lot of people. Smooth is, I say smooth. <laughs> I'm happy that Snoop is talking about this because <laughs> when um, Monique, uh, Monique spoke about it, they felt like oh she's coming she from a bitter, bitter place, place. Women stressing yeah. women and blah blah blah. But I'm so happy that Snoop Dogg is. Talking I don't care about if Snoop Dogg is on the fire. It just shows that a lot of people are not smart. Because of the words. Yeah, a lot of people are not smart enough. That was why 50 Cent said, the people that I ignore apologize, the message you know, and choose to focus follow. on the language. He said, I mean, um, he said I apologize, I apologize for his for language his in advance language. so people will get distracted by words and miss the point. Expressing how it feels gets girl and Oprah, funky, dog face, LOL. <laughs> now, I wish I could say the things Snoop Dogg said because um, these women, they've been at it for a long time and they've been getting away with all of these things. And I think it's time for them to really, for somebody to really stop these women. Either you take, but it's so sad that Oprah owns her own network so you can take her off TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Gail King, and she's blaming CBS, then sue CBS if, if that's Why not. is she blaming CBS? Was it not she's in the clip? She's saying they posted it, but I'm thinking Was that... Was it not in the clip? Did they exactly. manufacture it? Did they, did they edit she said, it? Um, it was taken out of, she said it 
it was taken out of context that if it was somebody that if she had seen it herself, she would be so mad at herself as well. I think our point was that she had a very long, extensive. We really do not care. Why was that part of the interview? Why would she? Especially now, nobody's saying you shouldn't ask that. Probably later. Hold on. Is this if Leslie had to tell her we have to now let it go because she kept probing, mm. kept asking, and she had to say, you know what? And she was like, and even when Leslie was trying to talk about Kobe in, a, in such a good light that he's not that type of guy, she mm. never saw him as um, somebody who would um, take advantage of women and stuff like that. He said, but you wouldn't see that though. You were his friend. Like, what were you trying to yeah, get? That's Kobe. What was that she can, like, you like, wouldn't feel. see that. Like, why would you say I wouldn't see? Okay, so because we're friends means mm. when you're doing something terrible, I won't see it. Mm. Do you understand? I mean, let it slide for a while, but I after think, after when we're in our corner, I'll be like, why, why would you, you do that? Why you bring it up? Why, bring why didn't it? you bring Kobe to your show to ask him directly? When he was alive, was you had a lot of time to probe this guy, to ask him questions. It was discharged. These cases were dismissed. Yeah. Do you understand? It's not like any of these cases are still ongoing. Mm -hmm. None. None. Do you understand? Yeah. And then you're bringing it back up. You did the same thing with Michael Jackson. These cases were dismissed, but you brought back these little kids with lies because you, there's nothing you can tell me that living I Neverland think we did Michael was Jackson all lies. One specifically, it was very unfortunate because the entire documentary was even debunked, mm. and people were calling out, or, um, calling out Oprah and telling her that she should make a statement about it. They've already debunked most of the things that were presented in this documentary as facts. So that means that you peddled these people as. You know, you peddled them as victims because it wasn't it was no longer alleged victims now. It was victims that you brought them out to be. And then you said that Mike you you, you convicted Michael Jackson mm. on your show. That was basically what Oprah did. And from that moment, that was when people started becoming skeptical of Oprah and her dealings. And people were more skeptical, especially when when it was time for her to talk about Avin Weinstein's case, she was very, she was on defense. She was not, Make it about she did not him. convict him. Mm -hmm. She did not say, I, I completely do not stand for what Avi has done. He's my, he was my friend, but I cannot condone any of his actions. She didn't do all of that. But when it comes to black men, She's always ready to jump on the wagon, always That's ready to support. To do with Russell the, Simmons. You know, there's the Russell Simmons, there's Kobe now, and then there was Michael Jackson. It feels like all of the black men who have had like great legacies, she's ready to like tarnish their image. And more black people, more black celebrities are starting to speak up. Before it was 50 Cent, 50 Cent called her out. Now, you see, now, now you see why Tyler Perry ah, makes ah. black women look like they're bitter. <laughs> <laughs> but then, he's not, his best friend. Exactly, actually. Tyler Perry yeah. is Because he knows friend. her. But I'm sure he's is, getting his most of the stories from her. Tyler Perry has not come out openly to also speak. Whether Tyler Perry for, Adley talks about No, 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 no not for really great. Now, I mean, your best friend is usually dragged. Yeah, and Tyler Adley, is a he, vocal person. No, he had the Gail, defends her. I said Gail. Uh, Monique talked about him. She was like, he also agreed that, okay, that was wrong. He, he, she wrong. did something wrong, mm -hmm. but he would never openly come out to talk about it. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I don't understand it's their power, it's business, it's bond. Do you know how much Oprah invested in Tyler Perry? In Tyler Perry. Mm. So it would be very, Do you understand? Very like, we're talking about billions of dollars. Yeah, maybe maybe um, have you invited, invested so much also. Yeah. Millions, also, sorry. Because the thing mm -hmm. is that, People should realize that opera is seated with a lot of powerful people. Mm -hmm. If we want to talk about powerful media people. moguls, mm -hmm. mm. opera is seated at that table. Mm. So whether we like it or not, doesn't want to step on toes. Exactly. Whether we like it or not, she is not going to want to. Then step on get toes. off. Then get have, off documentary. Seen, yeah, then stop seen, acting like you want to expose yeah. the truth. Have you seen exactly. what Bill Cosby the said? So the response. What? Bill, what? Bill, Bill yeah, yeah. I saw Bill Cosby, and um, I'm glad he actually said that because. Um, he shows that he still has hope, even though they locked him up, and he's still very, very, very hopeful about the situation. It didn't come out from, um, oh, they did me bad, they did me this. He, he made me look like, okay, this is a man who is actually healing and actually learning from where he is. I think he's in a good place from that response. I mean, and I'm really, we've established him yeah. being in a good place when the news about him training people and um, sharing his life story. I think it's in a very good place, and I think when it comes out, living his life each day. Yeah, I think when it comes out, it will even be better. Yeah, so so still, we'll regard, be as regards this um, Oprah and Gil King thing, because I've been seeing so many people's comments, and then so people have come up from the angle of 
um, we are trying to silence victims or we are trying to not mm. talk about or you know we are trying to perpetuate a rape culture and I just want to say that when it comes to this particular topic nobody is trying to mm -hmm. absolve if these men actually committed these crimes nobody is saying that they have not done that mm -hmm. what we are talking about is how the platform fairly is how they are hypocritical I don't know what how they are against black men they would call out black men who have done these things but they would I don't know I don't, I don't know I don't know what they are get the probate, but it, not do the same thing. I don't know what Exactly, social media wants. Yeah, so the fact that even if we believe somebody is wrong, should we jump at them, strangle them, beat them up, and do jungle justice? Because if these cases have gone to court mm -hmm. and they were dismissed, they didn't have any reason to sentence these people to jail, who are we? So why are you telling me that um, we're trying to silence? Why don't you go to the court of law and tell them they're trying to silence victims? It's not just the Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Like, because pe what people are against is not just the court of law, it's about a system that tries to silence women. But, when Kobe but I'm saying that when it comes to this particular situation, we cannot say it's a system that silences women because they had the opportunity exactly. to actually interview Kobe and ask him these questions did when he was media, alive. Media he did and a lot of kind of I think there was a particular talk. interview where he apologized that, oh, I about one particular lady, I can't remember her name now for the life of me, but um, it was like um, he didn't realize that that was how he made her feel. She felt, yeah. Do you he understand that now that that's doing the trial that he could actually see how she felt and he's you know that's a remorseful guy he's actually a re he was actually a responsible guy to own up to all of those things and be like oh wow you know there's certain things that i might feel like okay myself and lc we're this cool but i wouldn't even know that i'm making you feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. do you understand until you come out and maybe you're telling somebody else and i'm there and i'm like really like i didn't even know this made you feel uncomfortable you know, so there's certain things we do yeah. that we do not even know the What's it called now? The magnitude of what we're doing. So yeah. it's really I think sad. I'll just say this also that the truth is just that there are so many powerful men who have had complicated legacies. Mm -hmm. But what I what the issue I have is the fact that when it comes to black men, the conversation is always about their complicated legacies. Let me tell you other white men, other powerful white men who have had complicated legacies. David Bowie has had, com has had a complicated legacy. Don't go too far. Elvis Presley has had a com uh, complicated legacy. Nobody ever talks, whenever, they bring, up, whenever they bring up their name, <laughs> nobody ever ever refers to these things that they've done. People act like it did not even happen. But when it comes to black men, they ignore whatever it is that they've, they've achieved done, in their yeah, field. And focus and on, all focus all on yeah. just, so that is my issue. And for me, it just signifies that there is an institutional and racism. And we cannot have two strong black women in that space. In that and they are, space and they are also still supporting anyway, that. Anyway, let's move on to the next story. <clears throat> Remileko Safaru, popularly known as Reminis, gets a nomination in the 2020 edition of the Africa Magic Viewers Choice Award AMVC for his role in Kemi Adetiba's 2018 film King of Boys. Reminis plays Makanaki in a, pol a political talk um, plotting revenge against Alhaja Eniola, which was played by um, Shola Shubawali, who was also the lead character in the movie. The rapper is among, is um, up against Richard Mfredamiju from Seven, Ramsinoa in Living in Bondage, in Kem Owo in God Calling, and Pascal Tokodi in Disconnect. I just hope he gets this. Mm. No. Well, he's he he gets against it, a whole now, lot of people. He gets it. He's now going to stop that line that says, um, what's that Faust line? The only, yeah, well, the only yeah, rapper. Yeah. With every MVCA. <laughs> hey, <laughs> time, hey, I thought about, but who cares? Yeah. I think we need more people in that, mm. in that I feel like Ramsinoa might actually win in this category. Ramsinoa For the support, yeah, yeah, because of living in Bondage. because of living in Bondage, because that was a really, really good performance. Mm -hmm. And if you also look I at... I come I haven't seen that movie, though. I don't know. You should see it. Is it that late? We also it's noticed late. that yeah. we didn't have AMVC last in year. Because the calendar gap for this one is April, April 2018 to um, November, November 2019 because I was surprised when I saw mm -hmm. King of Boys and I was saying ah, this is King 2018 Boys movie what is going on so there are so many searching. movies that were like mm -hmm. since 2018 King mm -hmm. of Boys up north we are looking at so many movies from 2018 that even don't let me say almost forgot that you mm -hmm. even watched them and yeah. you are seeing them on the list and you are wondering like did not really but Makanaki I think he um Played his role right in um, mm. King of Boys. It was absolutely amazing. But I think I that was like, my best like, character yeah, in the movie. I feel like that space, um, whatever happened to ABCA last year, that space is depriving um, some movies some that would movies, have had yeah. an opportunity mm. for um, 2019 right now because yeah. you're now, you have so much now to pick from. You're like dealing with two years or yeah. at least between a year. So it would affect some movies that, that should have gotten, gotten awards in 2019. Award. Yeah.
Yeah. But it's all good. I'm glad that they are back and whatever it is, I hope they become more consistent yeah. and not do 2021 no show <laughs> <laughs> and i hope he wins but i don't, I don't think I don't I, except think. they want it for the class you know sometimes they give this an uh, awards now just for noise i don't think it's uh, do you know what we've seen ramson noir we can tell ramson noir is a great actor mm -hmm. we know richard mofet damage joe is a great actor mm -hmm. but that's the first time we saw reminiscing and that's the more reason i mean this is his first time like, has he done it again has he replicated it exactly we're talking yeah, about best supporting, supporting role, not yeah. best uh, movie what about or okay what about, what about what about what about when Fowles? What about when Fowles won it? Fowles too. That was the first time. Do you know how many movies Fowles? No, no. When Fowles won it was the first time. It was Jennifer's Diary or what movie it was it? It wasn't. It wasn't. I remember he does his constant acting online, so it's it's not it's just not about acting online. We're talking about movies. We're talking about um, screen. And I'm saying that was the first one actually. Jennifer oh yeah, Fowles. Jennifer was in Fowles' first, first movie. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Mm. Jennifer is not even a movie. It's a it's series. A series. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, that's the first time I saw Fowl's acting though, for mm -hmm. real, for real. Okay, um, I hope he wins and um, or good. I mean, being nominated, like we always say, is a win, so yeah, he's done good. I pray they find better. This is not Grammy, <laughs> he nominated is not the win. Come on. <laughs> is that that is I'm just joking, I'm just joking. I'm just <laughs> nominated on any platform is a win. Yeah, it I is. I mean, there's huge, always going to be one winner who just that. won, whether we like it or not. So, um, good luck to all the nominees for this um, mm. AMBC mm. for 2020. Um, congratulations already. And that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on all this conversation by visiting our YouTube channel and subscribing to Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my co-anchor Sunimi Dekombi and if you're watching Okay, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Stay with us.